Hello, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with a new dyeing experiment. We are going to take one of my favorite bear yarns. This is bear stroll fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks, which is a wool nylon blend. It is 25% nylon, 75% superwash merino wool. And we are going to twist it into a hank of yarn. Now, I've done this in another video that has recently been uploaded to the challenge, but I did it using Easter egg pellets that won't break. Today, our dye bath is going to contain Wilton's Violet and Wilton's Delphinium Blue, two colors that we know from past, experience, past experiments break really, really well. So we'll see what happens when we twist this skein of yarn into a hank into a twisted hank like so and dye her up. So I'm not making it super tight, but I do want there to be some tightness. I want there to be some areas of yarn that are harder um, for the dye to penetrate. In this first experiment, we are going to actually pre-soak this hank versus adding it dye and then add it to the dye bath early and bring it up to temperature. Part of my reasoning for this is that some of the dye, I want, I don't want to have huge white patches. I'm hoping that some dye will penetrate the center. And I think that this will give us the best chance of having, although probably paler colors, some colors to penetrate the center. If of course this fails, then we'll try it again, adding dry yarn to the dye bath. But I like to mix it up and try different things to see what works. So I'm going to be pre-soaking this in just plain water. And one of the reasons for doing this is so that when I add the yarn to the dye bath, I don't have to stick my hands into it to help it sink down. Um, once the, the yarn is already saturated and all these air bubbles are out, it should sink into the dye bath pretty nicely. While the yarn is pre-soaking, we can set up the dye bath. Now I've added, I don't know, my guess would be between six and 10 cups of water um, to this dye bath. And I'm going to add to it two tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm using the generic version from my supermarket, local supermarket. Um, and the, this acid in the vinegar will help the dye permanently adhere to the yarn because it works in acidic conditions. And now I'm going to add some Wilton's Violet and Delphinium Blue. I am just sticking the edge of a knife in, coating it nice and thick, and then we'll stir it all into the pot. I could actually use a measuring spoon to add the dye. Oh, come on, guys. Uh, but, you know, I find it that it does not really need to be exact, and this kind of is more fun. I'm wearing gloves to try to avoid changing my hands purple. There we go. Okay, that is the Wilton's Violet. And next, yeek, it's all gloopy. See, this is why I wear gloves. Um, get a nice coating of Delphinium Blue. Uh, which is a color that we um, know from past dyeing experiments that also contains blue and red food colorings that break really nicely. And so this, um, I think is adding this color is upping the ratio of blue to red dye. We should still end up with some nice purple, but I think we'll get a good deep blue. This is a pretty saturated dye bath. All right, the dye is added and mixed. And once 
The pre-soaking has finished. I will add the yarn and we will start heating things up. Let's get ready to rumble. I let the yarn pre-soak for about 20 minutes or so. And now we are ready to add it to the dye bath. You may have noticed I just turned on the heat. Um, I wanted to get things going and it won't get so warm that I have trouble putting this in. You can hear me pulling the yarn out of the pre-soak and then plop, I am putting her into the dye bath, making sure the top of the yarn is at least covered by dye in all places. In fact, I am also going to add, I think, a little bit of water. Let's see, no, nope, we've just got a buoyant, a buoyant skein for Hank of yarn. Um, that's fine. Um, we'll bring it up to temperature and then see how things end up working. I am very excited. All right, we're at a little bit too vigorous of a boil, so I'm gonna reduce the temperature, but you can see, since we can see the bottom of the pot, the water is already starting to clear. Um, we've got nice deep color even along the top, and I'm excited to see how this will turn out. I'm gonna keep this the heat on for probably another 20 minutes um, and then at which point um, I'll check back in with you guys. After 10 minutes since my last check-in, the water has cleared substantially so I am going to turn off the heat. Um, the heat has been on for probably a total of 20 minutes from when it started at room temperature and ramped up. I'm now going to let this sit and let things cool off before I remove the skein of yarn. But there's a few things that I'm a little excited about. Um, I'm really excited about the depth of color on the outside of the yarn. Uh, and I'm excited that we're going to get a reveal of what this color is going to look like pretty soon. I love doing the cake dyeing, but you don't really know what you've got until you unravel the cake back into a skein, and that can't happen until the yarn has dried off a reasonable amount. So, but when it's time to wash this yarn, we will immediately see what has been taking place inside. So now we're just gonna sit back, let this cool, and I will see you when it's time to reveal. Okay guys. It is the moment of truth. Let's see what this skein looks like. Oh, picking it up, I immediately see that we've got some white sections in the middle. Ooh, that is gorgeous. You know, I was hoping for not a ton of white but this is gonna be rather striking. Um, I'm curious, and once it's dry, I'll have to take a better look at it to see how big some of these white patches are versus the colored patches. But it's certainly an extremely unique colorway. And, you know, if I decide that there's too much white, I can always over dye it. But it is interesting to see how little the dye penetrates the inside of this skein, even though it was wound pretty tight. And the huge depth of color that we have on the outside. But we're gonna wash this up, let her dry, and then see, you know, then we'll take a closer look. Um, I'm gonna use just standard dish soap and with warm water and wash until the water, rinse until the water runs clear. So we know that all of the dye is in the yarn and none of it will come off on our hands. 
Here we have our finished yarn that we dyed while twisted into a hank. Um, we used Wilton's Violet and Delphinium Blue because these are both colors that we know that break well. I did, however, both pre-soak the twisted yarn and I added um, the yarn to the pot as I was stirring the heat. So the breaking, the small amount of breaking that we got is not as extreme as in some of my other dyeing videos, such as when I kettle dyed wool fiber in delphinium blue and it broke into turquoise and fuchsia, or when I dip dyed um, yarn into Wilton's Violet and we got this gorgeous gradient. So I think that this is something that I might explore again in the future and maybe I'll add uh, maybe I'll add the dry skein or I'll wait until the dye pot is up to heat and then add it. But this is why it's a dyeing experiment because you never quite know what you're going to get. But I am really excited by the fact that we've got such really deep, dark patches in spots. Here, I'll turn this over. And then we have some patches that are fairly white. Um, I think unlike the cake dyeing that I do where you get a really asymmetric colorway that starts dark on one end and then goes into like this light speckling on the other. Through whatever you knit with this, the entire skein, you will have some dark patches. Just in some areas you'll have more light patches with pink and in other areas you'll have light patches with purple. How this really turns out is something that would be more apparent once you wind this into a cake or even if you were to rewind it into a new skein. But whether you do this first and then over dye the yarn to get rid of the white patches, I think that this technique ha is interesting enough that warrants playing around with it a bit further. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you for joining me on this dying experiment.